एवरी वन आई हैव कम अप विथ वन मोर वीडियो ऑन रैग सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट एन एप्लीकेशन कॉल डॉक्यूमेंटर इट इज़ गोइंग टू यूज द रैग आर्किटेक्चर विच इज रिट्रीवल ऑगमेंटेड जनरेशन आर्किटेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू यूज ओलामा एज आर वैक्टर स्टोरेज डेटा बेस एंड देन सॉरी सॉरी वी आर गोइंग टू यूज क्रोमा एज आर वैक्टर स्टोरेज डेटा बेस एंड ओलामा uh for running the llms on our local and then we are going to use mistral as our uh local uh, llm model and uh, then we will be using streamly to build the ui of our chatbot so uh let's get started uh before 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 starting to code i wanted to show you what we are going to build and an example of this real, uh, this application in real world so uh i have the hang on you might not see yes hang on let me quit it and then open it yes now you must be able to see with the big font so what i'm doing i'll go to my folder uh and here i'm going to run this already uh, coded application for the demo purpose so uh, since we are using the streamlit so i'm going to use streamlit to run this uh, application so this is how it is looking now let's understand what this is consider a uh, consider that you are a programmer and uh, you have a website that you maintain or that you have built of your hospital or of a hospital uh, and that website has a uh, extensive database of doctors their names their their departments their uh, their uh, uh, contact information um, and all now you want to build a chatbot now you want to build a chatbot and uh, this chatbot like any other chatbot should be able to handle the generic questions like what is this what is that for that what you can do you can directly integrate the openly available like uh, open ai chat gpt any other model but this will only help you to serve the generic questions like what does this what are the symptoms of cold this is a generic question now uh, as i told you this is website of uh, having a lot of information of your doctors what if if you want you want to allow your users to ask uh, specific questions around your doctor information doctors like do you have can you help me with the list of sorry list of doctors available in agra agra is a city in uttar pradesh or india so yes can you help me with the list of doctors available in agra uh, this information will be generic and cannot need is very specific to your own database so for the for for such cases we'll have to implement either two things first build our own la large language model from scratch and that is very extensive expensive car work sorry and then the other way is to use the rag art architecture i have written and made a doc, uh, video on rag architecture explaining it in depth what it is you i highly recommend you to go and watch it and then i have built i have created another article and a video around it to tell you what rag means without involving the complex terms like uh, vector database and all so uh, yes i highly recommend you to go and watch those videos or read the articles articles at least at least uh, this is available on my uh, technical journal called akanshasaksena.com now uh, coming back to the topic this is the this is the use case that i have talked uh, talked about that you want to serve Uh, uh uh you want to uh, allow users to uh, get answers to very specific questions related to your own database for this we will go ahead and implement rag architecture so for that 
this is how it is going to uh, look like a very basic version uh, we will upload uh, the pdf for example i can download a random pdf of the doctor list and the departments i get this list from this uttar pradesh um, uh, uttar pradesh uh, uttar pradesh national health mission website i already have downloaded this uh, list for the demo purpose so i'm going to upload this list uh, and then going to ask questions around it. You can use this application to uh, for any other type of PDF or document also. For example, a book also. So let's ask this question, same question. Can you help me with the list of doctors available in Agra? Let's see what it will reply. Uh, while it will reply, let me talk about the other use case you can, that I was talking about. That you can, you can, you can use it for any other, uh, any, any type of PDF. Uh, like a full-fledged 600 pages book, you can upload it and the ask questions around it. Cool, right? Solves a, a big problem, right? That, right? See, it it answered me with the contact information, the name where they work, the department, and everything. I cannot get this from the generic RLM, right? So this is how this RAG architect architecture helps, and this is how this our beautiful, very simple document that helps. Uh, so this is what we are going to build it. Uh, we I am going to close it because we, I am going to build it from scratch. So follow along. What we are going to do, I am going to go to my folder called tutorial and I am going to create a file called documental and uh, yes, and I am going to open this in my yeah uh, visual code, code uh, studio. Uh, now here i'm going to create a new file called main.py which is going to be the main file of our application so what we are going to do we will start writing the code okay so i'm i'll first import the streamlit library and you give this as alias called st for simplicity then i'm going to do what i'm going to um, do uh, define our sorry i'm going to define our uh, main function okay and this main function is going to be handling the uh, everything right the main main call of our application so let's define this main function and this is going to be defining the the first the point of our of interacting with our application so Oh, hang on it is going to be st okay so what we are doing we uh, are using streamlit so we will use the function title st dot title uh, to define the title of our page so it is going to be documenter now this should be enough to start our application and start seeing our application running on our browser so i'm going to you go to the documenter and I should see the main.py. I should use the same pyre streamlit run command to run this application. And it it does it, it seems to be working. I see only the title of the uh, page called document. Right. So now I'm going ahead and define the other things. The other things are that um, I I I am going to have a PDF uploader, right? So uh, let's upload, let's provide a PDF uploader button. So for that, we are going to use file uploader function of the uh, streamlit. So first, we'll we will define the label of this, but uh, of this uploader uh, input. Uh, upload the document, okay? then we are going to define what type of documents we want i say we want pdf only for now then i'm going to say that the key key is going to be the unique uh, machine name or the name of this file the this uh, name of this uh, yeah this 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 field uh, that we are going to use later to identify it in our further functions so it is going to be uh, file uploader and then we will define a 
a callback function whenever we are going to upload a new file or upload a file whenever we are going to make changes in this upload uh, field we will uh, define a callback function to be processed by that function so we'll i'll say process file whatever we have uploaded then uh, i'll say label huh, label visibility is going to be collapse and then i want uh, to accept multiple files yes true and then see if it is working uh, process it says that this function is not defined so let's define this function uh, and pass see i i am seeing the uploadable button here for for our pdfs or for our documents now the other thing was if you remember we need to have two things a place where we should see see the messages and second a uh, a uh, uh, field where user can type in the message for that we will do what um we will we will do this uh hang on mm, st dot so hang on we will i am going to create create a function display messages and this display message and then the other function is process input to provide the input field and process it so this display uh, this display messages is a function hang on def display messages is a function which is used to display all the messages uh, stored display all the messages stored and how we now oh, one more thing whenever we rerun if you remember we are we are having multiple reloads so we need to store the information in a variable which is going to keep it across multiple reruns so for that we are going to make use of a of a thing of or of a feature of streamlit call session um, uh, se uh, session state variable of st so what we are going to do uh, we are going to store all our messages in a variable called session state and then uh, use it to display it okay so but we we'll, you'll say that we have not stored any message there so for that first we will initiate it first i'm going to do i am checking if if uh, the session state the length of the session state is uh, zero then initiate it so i am saying uh, initiate it with a with a with a uh, element called messages uh, and initiate it with empty list okay now i am doing what whatever is stored in these messages i am going to print it or i am going to display it in the in our application on our application by iterating it over uh, this list using the for loop so i am going to use a for loop like this for messages in st dot session state dot messages and here i am doing making use of a very important function of streamlit call uh, Called, uh, hang on, with a chat message. So this function is used to display the message on the front end. So this function is used to display the message on the front end. So we have here we have to define the role of this chat message. So we are going to have two different two type of users here, or two type of role. First, the user. Second, assistant. So we say whatever uh, messages. whatever the role of this message is use it and display it on the front end using the markdown function and display the content of this message okay then this this should be done for our display message now i say we need to define the process input also so let's go and define this process input let's function let's let's not write anything and let's see if our if, uh, app is working fine it is looking fine no error so we can proceed so i'll uh, now we are going to define our process input function i'll say 
let's create a variable called prompt and uh, assign uh, take the uh, assign i mean take the assign it by using the function called chat input so this chat input function provides a text uh, textual input field with a placeholder whatever we specify here how can i help okay and uh, if there is data in this from this in text input chat input assign it to our prompt variable okay and then go into this um, uh, if condition okay now again we are going to use the same chat message as we have used above and then we here we are saying whatever user has provided here displayed on the front end so i am saying with st chat message and the role of this user is going to be use the role of this message is going to be user um, display the message which is the prompt that the user has provided okay let's see see i can see something let me type i can see the, the data i can see the data can you help me but it is replacing only right so i see some progress now i need to see all this information i do not only need to see the the one message replaced by the other message so for that we need to save it in our session state we need to save this list this all the messages as list in our session state so what we are going to do uh, i am going to do session state uh, messages append uh, the role of this message is going to be user and the content of this message is going to be prompt okay and let's see if what it does hey can you help see hey again again see all my messages are being stored and i can see on the front end so things are looking fine now again now we have to generate the response also now we it is a chat bot right only user is not providing the input uh, message or response we have to create uh, and that response needs to become uh, needs to come from the chat bot so what or our assistant we say so what we are going to do we are going to create uh, a new role and first we are going to create a response response is going to be uh, gen come from response method and then we are going to print that response so the print uh, again going to use the uh, function called chat message and here the role of this uh, message is going to be assistant and then mark down whatever response we will get okay okay cool so let's say it says that this function does not exist i was expecting this error so i'll go and define any random response here so it is going to be return hey i am akansha how can i help you so let's see if it works hey it says hi hey i'm a kansha how can i work help you <laughs> generate sorry oh i have to provide it inside a if condition okay when the user provides any message then only we need to generate the response right so i'll say hey it says how can i help you i'm a kansha can you help what do you do for this also it is going to reply this and also you see it has uh, uh, it is not replying to my message again it is only replacing the response again the same thing is happening so again we'll have to append it to our session state that we did not do this response so again i'm going to copy it and i'm going to um, append this uh, response to our session state so let's see if it works hey hey i am akansha how can i help you can you help what do you do it is replying same thing again same thing work 
see it is replying but the same thing generating the same response but the ui of our application seems to be looking fine the ui of our application seems to be looking fine right uh but if you remember we have to provide this in this we have to write the code for this thing also but whenever we are going to upload a file we need to save it in our database chrome chroma database right so for that also we need to write the code so if you remember we have defined the callback function for our file uploader uploader which was process file so i'll go and then start writing the code here so what i'm doing here is uh, now the thing comes here is um, first whenever whenever uh, i'll upload a file i want to start fresh because i'm setting the context of the conversation so i will do what i'll def i'll again set it initialize it with this so here hey what i'm saying here is if i upload a file let's say if i upload the file it is starting the re removing all the existing the previous messages it is working fine then what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, first i'm going to do what i'm now going to save this file whatever file we uh, the user uploads here i'm going to save this file locally on my system for that i'm going to use a package called um, temp file okay so with temp file uh, name temporary file and i say delete false i'll say write it sorry as tf temporary file i say write this file uh, get the uh, buffer of this file get buffer and then um, get the get the location sorry 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 hang on yes i need to okay get the buffer of this file and then i'm going to do what i'm going to yeah so hang on i'm going to get the path of this locally saved file and i'm going to get the path of this locally saved file from this uh, temp temporary location okay and then i'm going to do what let's see if it is working fine things are looking fine let me save it hang on here what i can do here is i can session hang on uh instead of that i can get the file location by what if you remember we had the unique name of our file like this so the file location we, the file information we can get from this variable so yes we have got this uh, file path and then we are going to do what we will do it later but let's see if it, the error is resolved now or not okay i do not need this upload this again test it let's test it let me see let me see if what mistake i am making i uh, let me see from the code here if i am making any mistake 
Okay. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> since we are uploading multiple files, since we are uploading multiple files, we need to iterate through each file, right? So what we are doing, going to do here is for file in um, get this multiple files uh, and then perform the same operation and then do this and then try to do this and then do this uh, maybe i'm making mistake with naming the function see it is working fine right so we were making mistakes because i was thinking i was treating it as single file but we have clearly mentioned that we are accepting multiple files so we have to iterate it as for loop and then perform the same thing. So we have got the file path of our temp, uh, uh, uploaded file stored in the temporary equation. Now what we are going to do, we are going to uh, process this file. So I want to do a few things. Whenever I'm uploading, I do not want to allow user to type in anything. For example, the file is of 100 MB. So it is going to take time to upload, right? So I do not want user to write something, provide, ask any question. So for that, I want to apply, uh, show a spinner. So for that, what I'm going to do, uh, I'll go uh, here and here I'm going to create a container uh, inside my main function called uh, feeder spinner and started as empty container okay and then here what i'm doing uh here i'll do what i'll again use the this this container called the feeder spinner and i am going to use it and also going to use the spinner of the SP, uh, uh, streamlet and define what label you want to see. I'll say uploading the document. Okay. And while it is doing that, we are going to gen, we are going to process it. So for process our function, process as in do store our, perform whatever is required to store this PDF in our vector storage. That is going to take time. So what I'm going to do for simplicity for now, I'm going to do this and then write this delay the uh, process by uh, three seconds. OK, so this is what we are doing here. Uh, uh, and later we are going to replace it with the uh, call process fee, uh, call implement function to uh, process this or feed this file to vector storage which is chroma and then what we are going to do we once our thing is done we are simply going to remove this file from using the os package and this file path okay so for that i have to import the OS first so I'll do, go and show you what I been trying to achieve see now I'm not able to do anything and it is showing me that upload the uploading the document thing right so this now we have completed the front end of our application right but we have not implemented the real crux of this application which is the rag implementation the back end of this application how we are going to integrate with the LLM, how we are going to retrieve the context from the PDF, how we are going to save the PDF in our vector storage. So all of that we are going to do now. For that, we are going to uh, uh, for that we are going to do what? We are going to create a class, a new file called rag.py. And there I'm going to create a class called rag. And here I'm going to define the initial, uh, the constructor of this class and later I'm going to define the other functions that we need. 
so uh, things are looking pretty nice so if you see there are basically two main things uh, the first thing is i have mentioned it in my doc also there are two things how we want, want to feed this file to our vector storage and then how we want to ask uh, how how we want to uh, reply to the user when the user ask a question so for that we are going to create two functions called feed and ask and where we are going to place those first if you remember when the user provides we are handling that with a function called process input and we are generating this with the uh, function called generate response so here we are going to generate uh, 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 from from our class called rat first we will need to create an object of our class for what we are going to do where we are initializing the session state we are going to initialize uh, an object of our uh, rat class called assistant okay and the assistant is going to be rat okay but it says it does not exist so i'll have to import it from rag import rag okay look looking nice i've created an object here now i'll simply go process input i'll i'll use this object which is saved in the uh, assistant key of our session state and make a call to a function called ask whenever user provides any input how can to uh, we are going to trigger a function called ask and then provide this prompt okay and then when a user when a user uploads a document which function we are using to handle it called process file so here what we are doing here is let me remove this function and we do not need this function anymore we are we are processing this file and then here we if you remember we i talked about here we have to implement a function to feed this file to our vector storage so for that i'll remove this and again going to use this session state assist assistant and then make a call to a function called feed and feed what this file path this file feed to our vector storage right so this seems to be working fine now but it says that we have to uh, call this function now we have to write the code for these functions right so you have to write the code for these functions so uh, uh, here it is let's start writing our rad class for the first we are going to define few functions here uh, feed feed is going to have the file path uh, which is going to be of string type and for now pass and then we are going to have a function called ask and it is going to have the prompt which is of string type and then pass right let's start uh, writing the function so for that first import couple of uh, packages that we need for have a working rag application so i am using uh, uh, first i am going to use um uh, thing called um okay first what i am going to do i am going to uh, so if you remember uh, i have all uh, in detail explained what and how rag works i'll explain it one more time with the help of example uh, diagram we are going to make a call to our feed function then we are going to do what when a user uploads a file it will go to the process file function we saw it then we are going to make a call to our feed function from the rag class okay to feed to our vector store which is chroma we have written the function but we are yet to define uh, write the complete code of it then in that function what we are doing according to the rag architecture is first we will split the document into small chunks so that we can feed it and find the similarity and then we once we split it into small chunks we store it in our database and then that database which is going to be chroma in our case we return the object of our database okay and we also set it as the retrieval for the future prompts okay and so let's let's start writing it okay so for that what i am going to do uh, for handling the handling this storage for splitting the document into smaller chunks let's not do it all everything in this class let's do it in a different class called uh, 
chunk vector store dot py okay and here i am going to write a class called uh, chunk sorry vector store okay and here i am defining the initial uh, initial function here and this is it okay so what i am doing i am going to import this class from chunk sorry chunk vector store import chunk vector store as c chunk vector store okay and then uh, in the feed what i am going to do according to the array architecture we have to split it so what i am going to do uh, uh, i am going to create an uh, uh, a variable to store the object of this cv c cvs object of this cvs chunk vector store class and i am going to make a call to uh, make a call to r hang on hmm then i am going to make a call to r uh, which function split uh document in document in or i can split into chunk and then i am going to provide the file here and then i am going to have the chunks here right cool and then i am going to uh, store it in our vector storage then i am going to store it in our vector storage so for that what i am going to do i am going to uh, create another another member variable call this is going to be a public because we would need it later uh vector store vector store and initialize it with none okay sorry initialize it with none and then uh, once we get the chunks we are going to create or we are going to store it in our vector store so how we are going to do that uh we are going to st store it in our vector store by calling the same class we do not want to have everything in this rag Uh, so uh, we are going to make a call to our function call which we will define later store to vector database this chunks okay and this is it and then i have said that we want to set this vector as the retriever so what we are going to do we are going to uh, uh, set a retriever that we are going to use later for our for our uh, conversation with the user the same retriever targeting to the chunks to this vector storage okay and then once done uh, we will do what we will augment it with the original query so we for that i am going to define it define a new function augment is like append this context these additional context from the obtained from the pdf from this chunks with the original uh, prompt to and send it to the user send it sorry send it to the llm to create better accurate uh, response okay so we that we are going to handle that augmentation we are going to handle with this function called self dot uh, the augment function okay clear now uh, let me let me do what let me let me do what uh let me define this function uh set retriever and this set retriever is going to be uh set for pass and the other function is augment okay cool so for that we are going since we are going to use this retriever again uh, uh, in future for you know for the further communication with the user so we'll define a member variable called retriever okay we will define a member variable called retriever okay so retriever hang on let me remove it here i do not this thing 
and initialize it none okay and i am going to set this retriever in this set retriever function retriever and how i'm going to set this i'm going to set this i'm going to set this with this first get calling the vector store and using it using it set retriever function to set it as the retriever here we are going to define couple of things we are going to define the search type of our uh, of our retrieval mechanism so it is going to be similarity score threshold and that is going to be search uh, works are going to be this is this is the i'm going to explain it later just give me a second uh, so what i'm defining here is i'm defining that whenever user to uh, ask anything retrieve the top 3 uh, uh, similar chunks and the threshold uh, for those chunks is going to be the score threshold for those chunks are going to, is going to be 0.5 okay hang on 0.5 Five. Okay, so this is it. Uh, this is we have defined the configuration of our retriever. Now coming back, coming to our argument. For that, we are going to use the uh, use the uh, chaining technique. What we are going to do that? How we are going to do that? And why we are going to do that? Let's understand that. For that, before that, let's define a member variable called chain that we are going to la use later, and also define couple of things that we would need to generate the response. is we will have we need to create a prompt with a uh, prompt template okay uh, so prompt template we can we can generate that prompt template uh using the uh lanchain dot prompts import prompt template here okay and here i am uh, creating a prompt template uh okay prompt template from from template and i am here i am providing a template that i am going to copy from here okay so this is going to be a uh, prompt this uh, prompt uh, the template of our uh, tom uh, prompts so it is it says that you are an assistant of uh, question answering task and use the following piece of retrieved context to answer the question if you do not know the answer just say that you do not know the answer use three sentences maximum and keep the answer concise we are instructing our uh, we are basically instructing our llm the model how to answer to the user uh, questions so we pass the question here and then we pass the context also that we are going to re uh, receive from the retriever okay uh, now we have defined our prompt, uh, prompt uh, template now we are going to define the model that we are going to uh, which we are going to use we are going to use the model for that first um, uh, import first import uh, the from lanchain community dot chat models import chat o llama okay so for that we are we are we are what we are doing we are doing this chat o llama dot uh, no chat o llama model is going to be mister okay hang on okay so we have created an object of chat o llama that uh, with this we are going to invoke or uh, ask the for the responses for, from our llm so this is an object we have created for that okay done uh, looking looking nice here but if you remember we are left with argument how to argument whatever uh whatever uh, context we get how to argument it to uh, or place it in this prompt and uh, ask our model for that we are going to use the chaining technique inside this function called argument so we are going to do this 
create a chain object and here we, i'm saying uh, create pass the context receive the context from the retriever okay and then questions are going to be first i am going to questions we are going to get from questions we are going to get from this this input field uh, at run time so i am for that i am going to in, in, uh, import this land chain schema output parser import runnable sorry schema runnable import runnable uh, pass through okay so uh, at run time we are going to pass this function this question okay then we are going to pass this the these these two variables to our what prompt template okay hang on then we are going to do what we are going to do what we are going to hang on i have to create an object right yes then we are going to uh, uh, pass whatever prompt we have created temp, uh, prompt we have created by passing it to the prompt template to our model and then we are going to uh, print it to the front end for that i am going to import one more thing called uh, from land chain schema uh, output parser import uh, string output parser and then here i am saying string output parser and hmm. yes oh yes so yes now we have created our chain object nice sweet and simple so this completes our uh, ui and the rag function but hang on we are yet to define the logic for our function called ask whenever user is going to ask anything we have we are yet to define how it need how it is going to uh, invoke or get generate the response so for that i'm going to define a function write the code of this function called ask and it is going to get this query which is going to be of string type and this is going to handle it how it is going to do what it checks if uh, if chain is set or not if not set first ask the user to upload the document okay so it is checking first the retriever is set or not the retriever will only be set when we will feed it okay when we when we will feed it as in when we will upload the document so so we will ask the user to upload the document first to set the context of conversation okay so this is what we are saying and if it is set we are going to simply return by invoking by invoking the by using the invoke function and pass this query okay so this seems to be completing our logic for this rag class okay now let's write the logic of this chunk vector store class remember why we are using it we are using it to segregate the code we are using it to segregate the code for splitting the document into smaller chunks and creating an object and or uh, and storing it in our vectors database so let's the uh, let's write the code for that so we are uh, make calling two functions if you remember in the feed function uh, split uh, into chunks so i'm going to write function here first and pass and then second function was uh, store to vector database so i am going to create another function and pass now let's write the code for it for uh, for splitting into smaller chunks we will have to import some 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 classes some packages so let's start with that we are uh, going to import the text splitter uh, from land chain text splitter import uh, recursive 
character text splitter then we are we are going to import langchain vectors stores utils import of of uh, this filtered complex metadata i am going to explain why we are doing it later then we would need a uh, langchain uh, from langchain community we would need uh, sorry meant loaders import uh, pypdf remember uh, remember we are dealing with pdf right we are dealing with pdf so we need to import this package to handle to load this and to to process this file then we would import chroma um vector store from our langchain community import chroma okay then from the here i am going to import uh what type of embedding we are going to use so uh, we are going to use fast embeddings for that we are going to import fast embed okay so that is it now let's define the code for this split into chunks so what we are doing we are first uh if i go here i'm passing the file path so here file path is going to be of string type so here it's i have to first load this um uh this file using the pypdf loader dot load function so i'll specify the file path and uh, then i'm going to split this uh using what using recursive character text splitter i'm defining and create in in creating an object of it uh specifying what size of chunk uh what size of uh hammer uh i am defining the chunk size of our doc uh, of uh, of uh, of the uh, i am defining the chunk size of our chunks which is going to be 1024 bytes and then i am saying uh uh, uh and then i am saying uh that uh, overlap settings is going to be 20 bytes okay so that we need to have some context of the previous chunk on the next chunk okay i have created an object called text splitter now i am creating the chunks by doing what uh, by uh, using the split documents passing the document here uh then i am going to filter out the complex metadata which is not required which is not required for the for the processing right so i am going to pass the chunks again created and i am going to simply return the chunks done now let's create the vector uh, the code let's write the code for the store to vector database as in how we are going to store it in our vector vector database it is going to be very simple we are going to return chrome dot chroma dot chroma um, call the function call from from documents here we are saying the documents are going to be uh, chunks here first we i need to define a member so the uh, the argument uh, sorry parameter chunks we need to take to store into the database uh and so we will store the chunks and then we have to specify what type of embedding we are using so we are using embedding is going to be fast embed dot fast embedding type of embedding we are using and this is it so this is it this seems to be completing the full code of our application we are not using this time anymore so let's see if it is working fine let's upload the same document that we did okay uh file path let's try again let's see where it is 
throwing the error feed file path feed file path file path we have got the file path we are passing the file path here okay though it is right but let's see uh, let's let me check it with the code here so it is creating problem at the time of uploading okay so i'll comment it sorry invoke with this query i'll comment it i will comment it i will comment it i will and then here i am commenting it it seems to be working fine right and then here i am calling this uh, split, split into chunks here so here let me do this remove this code and pass and then see if it is working fine fine <sighs> let's upload it again <laughs> okay so we are getting the error here uh, pypd dot load okay so we, we are getting the okay for i am creating a mistake i have to do what here uh, yes so i have to create an object of it and then load it so it should work fine now sorry that you guys have to wait uh, uh, let me try again it got uploaded very quickly is it working none so not working definitely so now what to do file path goes here file file gets uploaded hmm. yes file path dot load loads the files split it split the documents chunks chunks it creates okay so we have written two functions ask and ask we are overriding first upload it uploading it uploading it uploading it so the mistake was that we have written the ask function twice now it says okay i have made a mistake uh, let me copy it here from here uh, i have definitely made a mistake here see it is going to be similarity score threshold so let me try again mm. upload it and see if it works now yeah big application and 
yes it it seems to be working let's it seems to be at least working at the uploading part let's test it uh, i'm going to make a call to use the same function can you help me with a list of doctors available in agra and then see what it replies hmm let's wait for a second so it is usually not slow but it is slow because of my system so yes it is still running let's wait should be replying last time also it took few seconds to reply and it replied with an error message <laughs> uh takes one positional argument supplied two so uh line number so here where where we are making the mistake let's go here invoke i guess here we are making the mistake um so in the ask function uh here we are making the mistake by what uh self chain invoke we are invoking the query which is going to the prompt model which is going to our prompt model uh here it is going to be this right let's try again so what we did i didn't i made a mistake here uh let's run it again it is uploading fine and then i'm going to use the same question and wait for it to reply let's see if it is going to reply uh, with a with an error message or if it is going to work fine let's wait for a few 5 to 6 seconds i believe 1 2 3 okay nice it is working fine so it seems to be working fine now uh so yes this is how we have created our application called documenter from scratch one thing that i want to mention here is when we are uploading i want to delete the messages for that i have already written the the old messages if you remember for that i have already written the code called mm -hmm. i have written the messages in the process file function to empty the message uh, messages list i want to do one more thing i want to uh uh reinitialize uh, all the variables this vector store so that it can it it should be starting from scratch or fresh not using the old uh, vector store right or or uh, not using the old retriever so for that first we will make a uh, make, make a call to clear function of a rack class whenever we are uploading a file to start fresh and now we need to write a function called def clear and here i am going to uh define all these variables uh hang on to none so for that self 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 and that is it and let me upload it again and see if it works it should work it should work uh so yes uh see it worked okay uh let me move it. yeah it worked so this is how we have built a functional documenter or a rag application using the chroma vector database and streamlit and uh, llm model call mistral uh so yes um hang on Hang on, yeah, Mr. So thank you very much, very much. Stay tuned for the uh, next videos where we are going to explore more. Maybe see how to how to not rely on any further downloading the data from the internet or 
uh, finding out a logical or an automated way for that. So thank you very much.